Are ghost kitchens the way to go? Maybe you've thought about starting a ghost kitchen, but the question is, should you start a ghost kitchen? So I actually started a ghost kitchen two years ago and we've grown that company shy of a million dollars in gross revenue. So if we've made so much money, then why have we decided to shut this down? So I'm gonna tell you about my experience operating a ghost kitchen and while ultimately decided to make the decision to shut that ghost kitchen down and finish starting my food truck. So my name is Dasheen Simmons and in 2019, I co-founded a company with two family members and we called that Susie's Chicken and Fries. And it was truly amazing to see something go from just conversations and an idea to an actual business. And then to see that business explode was even crazy. So we started that business with just one food truck and we turned that one food truck into two food trucks and two restaurants in less than two years. We won the best food truck two years in a row. Best food truck, Susie's Chicken and Fries. I won top 20 under 40 business professionals, but as our popularity grew, as well as our business and our revenue, the tension between us also grew. And ultimately, our dream was turned into a nightmare. It truly was a nightmare during that time. In the long run, we all decided to part ways. And then I relocated to North Carolina, where I had lived six years previously. So my wife and my two kids and I relocated three and a half hours away and completely uprooted our entire life. And at the time, we didn't really know fully what we wanted to do. But deep down, we knew that we wanted to start another food truck. But at the time, due to leaving my main source of income, as well as relocating, I didn't have all the funds to start the food truck. So one day, my wife was just, you know, scrolling on Facebook, and she came across this post that was talking about how a big commissary kitchen had opened up within about 10 miles from our house. And when my wife first told me about it, I kind of brushed it off. But then she said, how about we just schedule a tour and see what they're talking about and just go from there. So we had the tour. We loved the facility. It had everything that we needed and the price was fair at the time. So we decided to move forward and start Big Daddy's Wings and Things, which was basically a spinoff from what we created before, which was Susie's Chicken and Fries. And we made this decision because we already knew the ins and outs of this business. So we could, you know, start running from day one. 912 on your Monday, from Postmates to Uber Eats, even Grubhub, more people skipping eating out and bringing the restaurant experience home. But how that food is prepared is getting a big change. More competing companies are now teaming up using ghost kitchens to prepare your meals. So before I dive deeper into our experience with the ghost kitchen, let me actually define what a ghost kitchen is. So according to the official definition found on Google, a ghost kitchen is a business operating from low rent or non-commercial premises dedicated solely to preparing food online for delivery and pickup to customers. So that's actually not a fully accurate definition. So just think about it as a restaurant, but there's no place for you to sit and eat. Ghost kitchens primarily rely on delivery for their revenue and some facilities like ours allowed pickup. So it's a cool concept in theory, but it has a lot of fundamental flaws, which we'll dive into in just a second. Ghost kitchens started becoming popular at the beginning of the pandemic because many traditional restaurants were forced to close their dining rooms. So they had to find new ways to serve their customers and continue to generate income. And so with people staying home more, and relying on home delivery, Ghost Kitchens was just a, a complete no brainer because Ghost Kitchens made it easier to meet the demand that was created by the pandemic from people staying home and ordering more delivery. And at one point, Ghost Kitchens was projected to be a $1 trillion industry by 2030. So Mr. Beast with Mr. Beast Burger further propelled the popularity of Ghost Kitchens by showcasing a successful and scalable model by leveraging the power of social media and celebrity influence. And in late 2020, Mr. Beast expanded his business to over 1,000 locations. And the success of Mr. Beast Burger showed that Ghost Kitchens were able to scale very rapidly without the traditional costs that would be associated with starting a restaurant. So this led to a surge in both interest 
and investment into ghost kitchens with all that being said ghost kitchens seem like the perfect vehicle for you know the typical food entrepreneur to open their business however it's not as straightforward as it appears or someone else is going to tell you but i'm going to tell you 100 like it is so let's get into it the world of ghost kitchens definitely has its upsides but it also has tremendous downsides so let's talk about those downsides now one big issue is the inability to accept cash payments so operating out of a ghost kitchen means that you don't have a physical storefront so it makes it very difficult or impossible for you to be able to take cash directly from your customers and this is a big drawback because number one people still a lot of people out there still prefer to pay things with cash and missing out on these customers can really limit your your revenue and your overall profit so not only that but processing fees is a huge issue especially for us we've paid forty seven thousand nine hundred and thirty three dollars and twenty nine cents in processing fees in just two years and that's a cost that accepting cash would have helped reduce. So that's number one. Number two, another major issue is the absence of a dining room, which in our case, when we originally signed our lease, it came with a dining room and our customers were able to pick up their food, go to the dining room and enjoy their meal. But our landlords decided to get rid of that option and allow another member to turn it into a full dining experience, leaving us without that option and causing us to lose out on a significant group of customers that wanted to sit in and enjoy their food while it was still fresh, which ultimately affected revenue and profits. And that brings me to the next point, which is the lack of control. When you don't own something, it's difficult for you to control that something. And we were always met with different changes that the company decided to make that affected us that we just couldn't do anything about. But when you have a food truck, you mostly control everything that's going on in your business. So another major issue with ghost kitchens, which this is honestly probably the biggest one, is the fact that most ghost kitchens rely on delivery for their business. More specifically, third-party delivery like DoorDash, Grubhub, and Uber Eats. And that's cool, but the issue with that is these companies charge an average of 30% not of your profits, but 30% of your gross revenue. So that means off the top. And, and typically what they would tell you to do is to increase your prices to handle that 30% commission. But the issue with that is the commission is percent based. Therefore, if the cost of the item went up, then the percentage of fees also went up, making these companies richer. And in 2023, DoorDash alone in one year generated 8.6 billion dollars in revenue and they don't own a single restaurant a single delivery car they have no delivery employees they just make money off of other people's time and other people's efforts and when an industry is forced to rely on that it causes major issues it deeply cuts into your profit and we're not in the business just to say we have a business we're in the business of making profit and profit is little to none when you're using third-party delivery unless you have mega high profit items on your menu and even then why give 30 percent to another company when they're hardly doing anything for you so another issue with ghost kitchens more specifically the ones where many ghost kitchens operate from one bigger facility is how much competition there is in one facility for an example in our facility there were easily eight or nine different ghost kitchens that were operating out of the same facility and trust me i'm not shy of competition i thrive on competition it's actually one of my number one strengths. And we were hands down the busiest ghost kitchen out of every single one in the facility. But someone like me, where I've been on the entrepreneurial side of the food industry since 2019, I've really learned how to market to acquire customers. And that's something that a lot of people actually struggle with. So for the average newbie trying to get into the industry, this will become a big issue for you. The number one issue for us became the cost of our lease. When we first started our ghost kitchen, our lease was somewhere around $3,700. And that cost quickly climbed to around $4,500 per month. And the icing on the cake was when they asked if they could have 3% of our gross sales, although they would not contribute in any way to acquiring those customers on top of a flat rate, on top of additional costs that I thought were already in our lease 
that they, you know, doubled back and told us, no, it's not in your lease. So now you have to pay this cost. And this quickly brought our lease close to the $5,000 range. And if you look at what it costs to lease, let's say a restaurant, you could have a full dine-in restaurant for that amount. So that was the icing on the cake that ultimately led to the decision of closing down our business. And it wasn't something that we wanted to do, but it was something that we had to do. But fortunately, in the background, we've been working on our food truck for some months now. And our food truck is actually about 90% done. The last few things that we have to do is get our truck wrapped, get another refrigerator and a freezer, do a little bit of patchwork on our hood. Then we get our inspection and we're all done. And doing this will allow us to combat the many issues that I brought up in this video about ghost kitchens. But one thing that I will say, the ghost kitchen was a stepping stone in the direction of our food truck. This allowed us to get our brand out there, to serve tens of thousands of customers, and to really build our name in our local community, as well as, of course, help acquire the funds to be able to start our food truck. Because especially today, food trucks aren't cheap. At this point, we've put over $40,000 into starting our food truck. And at the time we started our ghost kitchen, we really didn't have that money. So I am grateful for this experience. If it's the only way that you can get into the food industry to, you know, make it a stepping stone for your food truck or for your restaurant, by all means, take the things that I say with a grain of salt and try it out for yourself. Just keep in mind the things that I've mentioned in this video.